Hey guys, welcome back. I know you're seeing too much of me. And remember, the new name is now not Fishing Florida Radio. We changed it this just last night to get your fish on. And I couldn't be happier because I'm really excited about the new products that you're going to see from, from Savage Gear. I think their, their paint and everything else is absolutely at the top of the game out there. And I couldn't be happier to introduce to you a new friend from Savage Gear, Jose. Is it Chavez? It's Chavez, yeah. Yeah, welcome, Jose. welcome to the show, and thank you very much. How are you? I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. Um, thanks for having me on board, and uh, yeah, everything's going pretty well over here. Just staying, uh, <laughs> staying to myself over in Florida. So we're in Tampa and just trucking along as usual. Yeah. How's it? You? Oh, everything's good. I mean, other than my son's in the other room. If you hear a kid screaming, it's because. He's playing Fortnite with his friends, and he's watched all these YouTube videos of everyone. Th they think that the the way to do better at the game is to scream at their iPads, and uh, they don't realize that doesn't work at all. But he's in the he's in the he's in the room next door of, of all things, and he was going crazy. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me how you got uh, how you got introduced into fishing, and how you got started with uh, Savage Gear. Uh, so basically, I've fished uh, my entire life um competitively at uh, at a point where I had more time and then um, I used to work in the biotech sector um, I have a degree from uh, in, in microbiology from University of uh, South Florida and uh, I worked as a microbiologist for a long time overseeing like hospital infection control studies in different parts of the country and I just got tired of traveling so much so I decided to go to ICAST and meet some companies and talk to some people and see if there was an opportunity for me to um, for me to work my way into the fishing industry. So I also at that time did a lot of writing and magazine photography. So mm -hmm. people kind of knew me from the competitive fishing and the, the the content that I would create. And so my idea at ICAST was let's see if I can work with small companies to make content for them. And, you know, give them the content that they need to be relevant on social media. And this was really kind of as before social media was as prominently used by companies as it is now. Mm -hmm. um, it was only kind of the bigger guys playing. So long story short, um, I knew some of the guys from 13 Fishing and the owner ended up giving me an opportunity to work there as a marketing manager. And I kind of worked my way up from marketing manager to be involved in some of the product developments to have some projects of my own to being the category manager for all of the lure um for all of the lures made there and then um long story short i ended up uh, getting an, an opportunity with savage gear to instead of being the head of you know of the lure fishing lure category like i was in um at 13 to just you know be in charge of all of the all of the products um from savage gear including rods and and some of the other stuff you'll see coming out here soon. So it was a great opportunity. And I just, you know, it was a really good group of people yeah. that I knew from, you know, other parts of the industry. And I was just happy to come on board. So yeah. it's been a half since I've been making the, uh, almost two years since I've been making the Savage Gear stuff here. The This year, it seemed like you guys have always had really great looking lures in the past. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and kudos to that. This year, you kind of looked like Hello? maybe you stepped it up to like a whole nother level. Um, it was that the is was that some of the goals this year when you started to, before we start showing everybody all the good stuff? Was that the one of the goals was to to really create some of the best looking baits on the market? Yeah, no, totally. So I think it, part of it is like you want to make the best looking stuff on the market, and the other part is you want the products to work really well. Yeah, because I think make something that looks great. And when the function's not there, then it leaves a lot to be said. And so I, I think there's, you know, companies that do one or the other really well. I think there's some people who make great stuff that uh, that works really well and it looks really good. And then there's companies that make things that look super realistic, but sometimes mm -hmm. the function is kind of lacking. Or doesn't and, work uh, at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not as good as it could be and yeah. so like i'm kind of a stickler on making things that i i'm i've always been a lure fisherman um even from my you know since college all i ever fished was lures and people would kind of give me a hard time about me not being interested in fishing live bait but um it's it's always been something i've been into tinkering lures and whatnot so 
I really felt uh, capable to take the lures and really make the program I wish existed. And with kind of the, the capabilities that this company has and in our factories, I've really been able, it's been an amazing, you know, platform for me to kind of create some amazing, beautiful looking lures like this pinfish. Like yeah. Just, I have the pinfish. The pinfish is ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The pinfish is ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I think it's the pinfish on the market by a landslide. I don't know that there's a, a, a better, more realistic looking one that I've ever seen. So can we, let's start off with the pinfish. So the pinfish, how long does the process take to come up with this bait? It's got that, the pulse tail, uh, the tail that has a, is completely proprietary to y'all, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. So this is something that we worked on when I first came on board. Mads had a version of the pulse tail that he was using for Europe. Yep. And then we kind of fine tuned it a little more when I came on board and made something that we currently now have um, that we use for the U.S. and European product. But this is our current pulse tail. And basically, we filed a patent for this unique shape and design. Um, but uh, basically, this this tail, what it does is it allows you to work a lure at really at really slow speeds. So this will swim and kick even at very slow speeds or it'll swim at fast speeds. So it gives you like a really big range um, operating range for your lure. The other, you know, benefit of it is a very natural, realistic swimming action. Yeah. And then getting back to realism, I really, you'll see, um, our focus on Savage Gear's realism. And the reason why is that every time a fish eats a natural bait, they have a positive, um, experience with that. So anytime a snook eats a pinfish, they're like, oh, that was awesome. Like, yeah. I'm going to do that again. And so when you can make lures that basically when that fish is eating them, that fish has no doubt in its mind that it's eating the real thing. It has no negative experiences or less negative experiences to kind of pull from to, you know, inhibit it from making that eating decision. So, you know, when you get like form and function and then um, and then like the finish of something realistic altogether, like it really gives you the best of both worlds for lure fishing, because um, with more abstract lures, there's not not really anything else that fish encounters that like truly represents that moment. You yeah. know what I mean? Other than the last time it encountered that lure. So there, you know, you get a lot of pressure on fish and then they start being like, oh, I'm probably not going to eat that. Something's telling me I shouldn't eat that. And you get fish to turn down your lures. But when you have things that are very realistic, then it, it you know, you really stack those past experiences that fish have had in your favor. So how how big is that? How 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 heavy is it? And what's the cost going to be on that, those ones? So this guy is it looks like it's a million bucks, but it's not. It's four ninety nine. Sorry, Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Eight ninety nine. Don't. Okay. Me. Okay. Eight ninety nine. Okay. That that that's that's <laughs> a lot better. Sorry, I'm scrolling through my Excel file right here, and something came up uh, that was four ninety nine. But I'm trying to get to the uh, to the page on it. So sorry. This is going to be eight ninety nine. Okay. It's one quarter ounces, and it's four inches, and it comes in a moderate sink rate. So the way we build these is that. Um, I put foam on the top of the lure. So it's got like a harness inside. So this top of the harness is foam. Yeah. And the bottom section has a lead ballast really low to it. So as you're swimming this and you come to a complete stop, this lure is not going to fall over. It's that... just going to stay upright like a natural bait. Yes. So you can actually swim it up and pause it. And I've had a lot of strikes on pauses. So depending on how you're fishing it, if there's like a rock and you know like your fish are staged up behind that rock, if you kind of creep it by the rock, um, a lot of times they'll eat it as it comes by. And sometimes if you bring it past and kind of sit it, looking away from them, they kind of view this as an easy ambush opportunity and they'll eat it. But they will only do that if the lure stays upright. Yes. If it falls over, they're like, yeah. What the hell is that? that? Yeah. yeah. That's a beautiful looking bait, especially eight ninety nine. How many colors is that one going to be in? So we got four different colors. We have a pinfish, which you're seeing here. Yeah, we I have... have I think there's a blue. Is there a bluegill one? The bluegill was. Re I I did the bluegills last year. Uh, what I'm so, seeing, maybe that's a croaker. Is what I'm seeing. That's it. It's a croaker, or a pinfish. So it's, yeah. really, it's really similar to a croaker. So that would be our uh, silver croaker. But we have this in four different colors. We have pinfish. We have ghost pinfish, we have dark pinfish, and then we have silver pinfish. And this the color I have right now is the pinfish. Color. Okay, we have a question. So, uh, what's the hook size on that? Hook size options from Butch wanted to know. 
So the hook sizes, uh, I'm trying to remember exactly what hook we put in here. Uh, so a lot of times when I do my lures, I'm more, uh, I'm more fitting the hook to the body. Oh, okay. So I think this, I want to say this is a four out jig hook. Okay. But, um, but it's, I just want the hook to fit perfectly. So I'm not so concerned as to, it needs to be this hook. I think, you know, there's a form and function and size to everything. And as long as the proportions are good, yeah, then you get, you, you have this adequate gap on the, on the lure. Yeah. The, then you get a good hookup ratio. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. I want to say it's a four odd. Um, but, uh, it, 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 don't quote me on that. <laughs> But uh, right. I can tell you that I've caught several very nice fish on this, and it has a really good hookup ratio. Yeah, yeah. That's what, what I will say about these style lures, so these style lures are more prominently used in uh, freshwater. Yeah. But when you're fishing something like this, you want a moderate rod, but you want a rod that has enough power to drive this hook. Okay. So it's a really beefy hook, so you really need – if people are fishing this on a really light inshore rod – they're probably not going to be able to drive this hook because the rod's going to load without pulling the hook through. Yeah. But if they use kind of like medium heavy uh, mod or a heavy power moderate rod, yeah. this hook will drive and they'll have no problems keeping those fish fed. Okay, let's go from the pulse tail pinfish to, even though this is a giant drought, the pulse tail trout I have a picture of, which is absolutely crazy. It looks like there's, uh, you have your normal your normal hookup, just like in the pin fish, but you also have a treble hook it towards the tail. Yeah, totally. So, um, a lot of this hook is this hook, this lure is really, uh, predominantly used in California. I think the guys in California were really the ones that pioneered the, uh, you know, those big trout swim baits, um, at least in the United States. And a lot of those guys for years, they've been modifying, um, they've been modifying their trouts to add a stinger hook in the back because mm -hmm. they fish them a lot in, in kind of like cold water conditions. Um, and when that happens, like the fish are really lethargic. And so they're eating their, the big fish they're, These guys are targeting big fish and those fish are really selective. They want to have fewer, but larger meals. So these big trout really come into play. And sometimes those fish will kind of inhale the bait, but because they're so lethargic and the bait's so big, they'll only kind of get a portion of it. So that stinger really helps. And what they've been doing in the past is they, um, they run a stinger from the, from the hook eye on the nose all the way to the back. And so what I did is I, I built into that foam harness. I built in a hook anchor that's behind the jig hook. So you'll have the jig hook kind of like this, the jig hook coming out. And then in that trout, there is a split in the fin where there's a hook anchor mm -hmm. and inside that hook anchor, there's a crimped wire cable to a stinger with a, a hook slot in the tail. So the hook will sit perfectly in the tail and you'll get really good uh, performance and action out of that. Yeah. That's, that's another beautiful, beautiful bait. I mean, that's a really beautiful bait. Okay. Let's switch over to the new Savage Gear Ned crawl, which is um, kind of like the, yes, that's it. Tell us a little yeah, bit about so that one. This is our Ned Craw. Um, basically, Ned rigging is something that's become a staple in most, you know, bass fishermen's um, repertoire of tools that they use because it just produces bait. It just produces fish. So we created our version of a Ned Craw. Again, this is going back to you know realism. Like I feel like there's a lot of companies out there that are producing Ned baits that work extremely well. They're, they're great products. They work extremely well. Um, but they've created a kind of a more abstract iteration mm -hmm. of a lure to use for Ned rigging and Ned rigging really shines in clear water and in cold water. And actually whenever fish are lethargic, uh, a lot of people don't think of it this way, but when the water gets really hot and fish get lethargic, Ned rigging is awesome too. Mm. But, uh, we basically took a realism approach again with our Ned rig. So we made a hyper realistic crawfish, yep. um, that is hyper realistic three, crawfish yes that is three and uh, uh sorry two and a half inches in size and also it's an extremely durable oh. soft that we call our duratec material so um and that's extremely buoyant so we added some salt in here to kind of help with the buoyancy because when you're fishing a ned rig what you don't want is you don't want your your lure to just go like pop up immediately like this you want it to have kind of like a slow natural rise mm -hmm. that makes it look like a, a, a fighting fish in defense position yeah. or something natural you know what i mean so that's kind 
that we adjust buoyancy in our material. Um, that they're extremely durable and extremely detailed. So now that you're fishing a clear water environment or an environment with heavily pressured fish or fish that aren't don't really want to eat, you have something that looks like the real thing uh, that's going to kind of tip the scales in your favor in terms of getting the bite. How many colors do those come in? And do those come in like how many do you get? How many are you going to get per pack, or is it just going to be sold singly? Yeah, no, you get several pieces per pack. So the craws, I believe it's five pieces per pack. Um, they come in, I want to say, 10 colors. Um, and we have a variety of really nice colors um, in that offering as well. And, and honestly, they work really well in um, for sight fishing in salt water as well. Oh, I've really? been using them quite a bit, yeah. Just so ring them with really the jig on, almost like what are a shrimp r jig through the tail and casting it that way? Kind of. So I still rig it on a mushroom style jig head. Okay. Yeah. So mushroom style jig head and that kind of helps it sit up yeah. um, upright. So, and it works, it works super well. So I've had some, um, especially like at least in Tampa, like when you get black drum or redfish on flats, mm -hmm. they can be really picky. Um, and one of the things I've had the most success on is, um, are these little Ned baits, but you know, even for the guys, you know, bass fishing, which the majority of these products will sell to bass fishermen. Mm -hmm. They, they work super well. So I think, you know, we're really excited about this. And I think this is going to be a big player in the next, in the future. Um, yeah. It's a beautiful, another beautiful bait. From the Ned Crawl, let's talk about the Dragon Tail. Okay. This one I like too. Here's the Dragon Tail. Oh, it's tail. a lot bigger than I thought. Yeah. So basically this is, we make it in six and eight inches. So it's a large, um, highly segmented lure that's extremely ribbed. So it's kind of meant to to take the place, or it's kind of the place where it fits is in the slug. Uh -huh. So whenever you're fishing like a jerk bait or a slug, this works really well. But it's a lot more versatile than that. So I mean, you can fish it on a jig head. It's got um, built-in cavities, Cavity. wide gap hook, um, and when you when you reel this, it's going to have like a natural like kind of like swimming action like that. And and you can work it as a jerk bait as well. So you can steady retrieve it or work it as a jerk bait. But what's cool about this is that there's a lot of situations where you're fishing like really pressured or really finicky fish. Mm -hmm. And they're, for example, tarpon. Tarpon don't like things that move a lot. But if you steady retrieve this, it doesn't move a lot. But because of the ribbing, they have a really easy time finding it and locating it. And the real, real subtlety of the of the movement. So really, to them, it could replicate um, ballyhoo or mullet or a small ladyfish. It could just be. It, it kind of just be. A, it kind of uh, reminds me of you know we have that worm hatch every even though that's a lot bigger than our worm hatch down in the keys. For yeah, tarpon, yeah. man, that's like key to have something like that. Actually, it might I, be about the right size. Actually. Yeah, so I, I mean, for 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 that, yeah, it's a little big, it's a little on the big size, but I think it'll work well there, and I wouldn't be surprised if you see uh, some smaller offerings here very soon. That's awesome. So. How much are those going to be, and how many colors are that? I have three colors I'm showing here: a uh, white, yeah, yeah. Let me pull uh, up. like a green. So we got uh, baby bass colorish. Twelve colors. Um, and we have two sizes, so a six inch and an eight inch. Uh, we had a comment and from, oh, sorry, keep going. Seven ninety nine per pack. Awesome. Our buddy Butch said, Butch? uh, those are my, our buddy there? Butch. You there? Can you hear me? Yes, our, sir. Our buddy Butch said, uh, those would be great on a, uh, for Cobia on a jig head. Yeah, so absolutely. Absolutely. Speaking of freshwater, everyone who's going saltwater fishing knows about these. They have a new amazing ballyhoo that you guys are coming out with this year. Tell us a little about the ballyhoo. Yeah, so that's our pulse tail ballyhoo. And um, so ballyhoos, I think if you live in a place where ballyhoos are around, they're a really uh, special fish because uh, predatory fish really key into them. And there hasn't really been a ballyhoo that looks realistic that people could fish in short kind of casting and retrieving or like slow trolling made this value out of a scan of an actual value and it looks fantastic dead on um, and basically it's all uh, through wired uh, okay. sorry line through it's a through design so the way it works is when a fish eats that 
the line can run through the body of the bait and the hook separates away. So you, your hookup ratio is great. And then your landing ratio is fantastic compared to traditional hook. Yeah. So any sort of suction feeder or fish that gets aerial, um, once it's hooked, these things work super well. Yeah. That's so that, that lure is about, um, I want to say it's a six inch bait. Okay. Um, comes in four, five colors. And, uh, let me pull up the retail on it. I think I you're going to sell a million of these things. Yeah, they they work so well. Down so we here, got, yeah. Yeah, we tested them over in um, the Everglades on some tarpon, and man, they were coming unglued, unglued over them, so it was really good. But they're eleven ninety nine a pack. Oh, that's And those are also, they're slow sinking. So those, um, they'll run really high on the water column like Ballyhoo do, um, and you can work them slow high in the water column. Um, and so it's going to be... That's going to be a really neat bait. And also they have the foam built in. So even if you put them to a dead stop, they're not going to just fall over. They're just kind of going to sit perfectly in line. I, I like that you do something like that because that just shows the, the that you're putting more effort and time into what a real bait fish is going to do uh, instead of because, I mean, I bet you 95% of the baits will end up turning over and getting yep. flat uh, and that kind of sucks yeah if you don't if you don't take the time to balance that lure with like adding buoyancy and ballast to the bait they will absolutely turn on their side even if you even if they don't when they're moving if you stop them like then it yeah. does and i think a lot of like as you progress in your presentations like you're really missing out on a lot of what you can do to like entice a fish to eat if stopping is not an option mm -hmm. but when you can add pauses to your presentation especially when you're fishing fish unknown structure it makes a world of a difference yeah okay let's talk about we're gonna get into three that i'm really really happy about let's start off with the 3d lizard <laughs> yeah the 3d lizard's killer i i really like the 3d lizard so um basically i've fished lizards for a long time i think they're one of the oldest plastics out there and i look at the lizards on the market and i'm like, i've always found myself being like man i wish i fish a lizard that looks like a lizard you know what i mean um and so basically we made a lizard that's anatomically correct in size um and it has a really nice swimming action so um i think whether you're you know carolina rigging it texas rigging it you could flip and punch the the, the smaller one super easily i mean there's endless options for that lizard and it actually looks anatomically correct like when you look at that lizard you're like man this thing it looks special. The pictures don't do it justice. Wait till you see it in your hands. It's, that, that's it's a pretty amazing. sexy bait, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I could, yeah. Now, what kind of tail is on that? Is it just a regular fan tail, or is it like a curly tail? At the, I can't see it in the it's picture I have. Curly, oh, it, it's a curly tail, and it, we there was a lot of tinkering that went on to get that tail into its shape. Um, so that that tail is is a really good performing, nice curly tail. It's not your standard, just like a curly, yeah. curly tail. I think when people fish it, they'll see how how nice it it moves. It moves really good. How many colors does that one come in, and what are prices on that one? So lizards, we got that in um, ten colors, and they are five ninety nine for the six inch, and they are four ninety nine for the four inch. Oh, so you got two sizes on those ones too. That's mm -hmm. even nicer. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of you know a lot of people like fishing the smaller lizards, uh, but there's really a place for a big lizard, especially like people in the south or in the west. Yeah. They bigger creatures. And one one thing you'll notice about the lizards is that our lizards are going to have a little bit larger of a profile than kind of what people have traditionally when people pick up, for example, like a zoom lizard, which is a great bait. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's caught a ton of fish, but the profiles are going to be just feel a little bit bigger. Um, the other nice thing about the lizards, like if you look at their hands, they have really nice details. So all these details kind of like flutter. You in can the water. see it in the pictures. Yeah, yeah they, they yeah. look they look great. They really look great. Okay, so we went from. Do we have two lizards, or did I do two things? Oh no, these are the salamander. Yeah, so the salamander is another extension of our Ned bait program. So the salamander is this little tiny hyper ribbed. Yes. You know, Super durable. Are salamander. all the plastics, all the new plastics in that that new plastic you guys are making? So not all of them. So our Ned Rig program are made out of our new Duratech material, which okay. is a very soft 
soft plastic material. And now the lizards are going to be made out of standard plastisol. Okay. Um, that will be salted. Um, oh, and yeah. Scented. But um, but the Ned our Ned program is specifically made out of this material, and the reason why is because you, you we need it to be very buoyant, and while we and durable, durability is really important in these itty bitty baits because you're using thin wire hooks, and they tend to just rip through stuff. So um, that's something we uh, we worked into that program. Now, how many colors, and what are the sizes on that uh, the salamander? Yeah, so the salamander, they're all three inches in size, and I believe we have, pulling it up right here, we have a total of 10 colors in the salamander. That's awesome. Okay, the one I'm most excited about, and I, I'll, I've got a couple questions about it because I'm the biggest bluegill fan of all time. The new 3D bluegill segmented body. Is this the first segmented body lure that you guys have kind of put out? No, we actually had one in the past, and uh, let's see, I have one of the old ones around. Oh, actually, I think I just got one from um, Florida Tackle Club. Not yeah, this probably. bait, but but something. Let me, let me grab one of the old ones just so you can see it. And so this is the old one. Um, oh, yes. Again, this is, this is kind of weird because this is, uh, I was redoing the colors. So the one that you have probably has very different colors. Yes. And so when I got hired here, I started upgrading the colors on all the new bluegills. So this is actually something that doesn't exist on the market. This is a prototype that I made. But um, it shows you the functionality of the old one. So the new one is not as tall in profile. Okay. So it's a little bit shorter in profile. And also it has more segments. Yes, three. And so it gives it a much more natural swimming action. And an action that works really well in, at a variety of speeds. So you can work the new one slower than you could this one. How big um, is this one? How many inches is the new one? Four inches. Four inches. Looks like it still has that super, uh, that jig hook in the front. Um, what is the weight on this one? So on the new 3D Bluegill, let me look it up. I apologize that I don't have everything. No, that's all right. There's a, you, you guys have a lot of new great products coming out. We, we launched a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So it's been a process. But, um, yeah, so the new one's three and uh, three-fourths of an ounce. Okay, perfect. It's uh, four inches in size. And it's in the exact same colors as our Pulse Tail Bluegill program. So you have a total of six colors, like super realistic, hyper-realistic six, six colors. And so the other nice thing about the new Bluegill versus the old Bluegill, the old Bluegill is a great bait. Um, yeah. One of Mads' designs is just a gorgeous bait. It works really well. Um, the new one's just not as tall. So smaller bluegills don't tend to have the big forehead, like uh, right here, like some of these do. Yeah. And then with a, a more uh, kind of like a shorter bait, a bait that's not as tall, you have a better hookup ratio oh, on okay. that because it, you, know, you have that a, a smaller space. It can kind of exit the mouth without the fish kind of fully having to open the mouth for the lure to get out. Do the new ones have the extra uh, like place to put an extra treble hook on the bottom, or is it just the hook on top? It's just the hook on top. It doesn't oh, have the treble option. I like that better. No offense. No offense. No. Treble hook just gets snagged and more crap down here for us, uh, but I like that. I think this is, uh, to, to be real with you, man, I think this is the best bait I saw this year. I really think this is a sexy ass bait that I cannot wait to get my hands on and do a closer look of because I think this is going to absolutely kill on my Lake EA. So yeah, totally. I've been doing super well. I don't know if uh, I posted one on my Instagram a couple days ago, but I've been fishing the prototypes for a while and the bass really just, they love bluegills as much as bass fishermen love bluegills. Yeah. They eat them. So it works super well. So when, because people are texting me at the same time and commenting. When do when are most of this stuff? When will we see most of this stuff available for us to start purchasing? In December. So we get a shipment that comes in in December. Okay. So we have a cup. We have a few months before they come out, but still lots of great stuff. I'll I'm going to do a a closer look on three or four of your things when when they're available to purchase and and I look forward to you know you guys seeing what I what we do here uh, on the on the new show and stuff. Uh, the, the stuff really is absolutely, honestly, Jose, that stuff is absolutely crazy. It's really, really nice. Um, so, Thanks, man. 
So congratulations on that. I mean, there is uh, when I start looking at like the the bluegill and the the uh, the pinfish and some of the some of the other stuff. I like the dragon tail. I love the ballyhoo, even though I don't know if I if it's for me. Uh, and the lizards, it just everything looks like it's top notch, and it looks like you guys actually put some thought into how not only will the bait work and run, and making sure that it'll stand up right, but having the right tail and making them look like they're. Like, like we said, there's some companies out there that make a great product, but they just don't catch fish. No offense. I've said it way too many times. Uh, these look like they're absolutely ridiculous. They're probably over-engineered. No offense. There's, there's, but that's not a bad thing at all. But they're, yeah, yeah. they they look like they they if they catch fish as well as they look, you guys are in for one hell of a, a year, man. Yeah, no, they definitely catch fish. I think it's going to be a great year. So it's, you know, kind of a bummer all this COVID situation is going on for reasons really beyond um, work and business. But um, we're just hoping to get back to normal soon and, and uh, yeah, and start start getting back to everyone, getting back to normality and continuing to live our lives. But, yeah, thank you. I've I kind of put a lot of effort into this stuff. I've... Um, my philosophy for making products has always been, let's make the stuff we wish existed. Let's not just make another version of something else. Yeah. And just trying to stick true to that. So, well, thank you very much for your time today. Everyone, you got to go to savagegear.com or savagegear-americas. Savagegear-americas. Yep. yep. Dot com. Uh, like I said, I'll do when they come out, I'll buy them and we'll put, we'll do our closer looks. I'm excited about seeing these up close and personal. But Jose, thank you for your time this morning. I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. Everyone say goodbye to Jose and I, stay with me for a couple of seconds. Everyone, make sure you get your fish on. Take it. Well, I mean, I should let me rewind that. Take a kid fishing, get your fish on, and we will see you guys soon. Cheers. <laughs>